Hey there, my name is Emil, and uh, people call me a Unix Greybeard. Uh, it's probably uh, because I probably am. I've been doing this stuff for quite a while, next to music and stuff like that. Uh, so there's very little OpenBSD content on the internet. So since OpenBSD 7.4 came out, uh, why not do an install for you guys? Uh, this is a, a laptop which I already installed. I first wanted to do the install like with a display capture like this, but uh, before the display gets initialized by uh, by DRM, HDMI doesn't mirror the screen, so you would have seen nothing. And I don't like like pointing a camera on the screen. That's uh, that's no. So I'm going to go through the install again, but this time uh, on a on a on a virtual machine. And then uh, in a further episode, I will do use the actual hardware to configure stuff. Um, so yeah, so uh, let's uh, put uh, put uh, the, the, the laptop screen away. And uh, I already booted a, an ISO here in uh, VirtualBox. Uh, I tried KVM. Uh, it, it's, uh, it times out when you try to uh, use a CD for some reason. Uh, and uh, it did work on a virtual board, so box, so let's hope it does again. So when you boot from an uh, from an ISO USB stick, you end up here. This here, you end up here. Uh, and it will ask you what you want. Well, we want to install, so let's install OpenBSD. And then I have to, of course, use the right window. Uh, yes, we're going to install OpenBSD. Oh, I'm sorry about the compression uh, earlier. Uh, that's the, the default X, uh, X window background uh, really likes to mess with video encoding. So I hope, I, uh, I, hopefully I'm no longer a, a, a pixelated blurry mess. Um, so yeah, keyboard layout. Um, well, here in the Netherlands, we do have our own keyboard layout, but nobody uses it. So default for me is actually fine. We uh, have the US international keyboard that most pe most of us use here. So uh, we're going to go with that. I'm sorry about the notification. Um, yeah, that's uh, just the default. It's fine. System host name. This is a throwaway VM. So I'm just going to name it foo. Uh, it doesn't really matter. You can use what you want. The laptop is called Arcturus. I like to name my laptop after stars. My machines after stars. Uh, networks. Well, if you're not sure which interface you should have, you can do question mark and it will list the interfaces, the NICs that it will see. Uh, I have only one, so it's quite easy. EM0. Uh, autoconf meet, means DHCP, so yes. And if you have IPv6, then you can do autoconf as well, then it will do either Router, adv router advertisement or SLAAC. And one of my cats decided to visit me. Hello. That's uh, four, by the way, in case people asked. Uh, okay, uh, we have only one interface. So I guess we're done. Root account. Oh, it wants a password. Let's uh, give it one. You can also do and uh, uh, you can also not give a password, but I do. Secure shell, sure. X window, yes. Synodm, well, I want to use uh, I use Xsynodm on the laptop, so I say yes. Uh, user, uh, the OpenBSD guys are quite funny. They anticipated that people say yes here again. There's my cat again. Uh, not right now. Hmm? Uh, so they, they, they anticipate that people keep typing yes. So let's give it a name. So now you can Google, you guys can Google me. You feel free to do that. I don't really care. Password. Ah, you of course you have to type it correctly. Allow root SSH login. Uh, well, I would uh, keep it at the default. Just say no. 
time zone, uh, you can get a list uh, if you do a question mark. Uh, Europe, Amsterdam, says I'm in the Netherlands is good. Now we uh, approach the point of no return. Um, I'm just going to give this guy a little bit of attention. So, yeah. Uh, the disks. If you don't know which disk uh, you should install it on, you can do question mark and it will list all the disks that it sees. You can pick the right one, hopefully one that doesn't have like an important operating system on it. Um, we have only one, uh, so yeah, we're going to pick that. Uh, now this is a, this is a new thing. Um, it asks us if we want to uh, encrypt the root disk. Well, we we want to because we also did it did this on the laptop. This is also a new feature. Um, this is uh, the VM is installed on an MBR, so we don't, we're going to do whole disk. If you have UEFI or EFI, then you want GPT. And now it wants a passphrase. Um, for the SD0 crypto disk, just repeat the same thing. And it will give you a, a, an, a, an automatic, automatic layout. You can keep this, uh, but uh, do pay attention. It says like, you can, you can edit this, you can shuffle this around. Um, you do have to take care with the, the, the C partition because that's your whole disk. A, B, you can edit. Uh, D to K, you can edit. You don't. You don't want to touch C. Uh, yeah, that's 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 your whole disk. So don't touch that. Other other stuff you can resize, which we are going to do because also resize some resized some uh, some disks, uh, some partitions on the on the laptop. Also, if you have a large disk like several terabytes, you have to. Uh, you have to resize stuff anyway because um, Open, OpenBSD will not use your entire disk if it's like a multi -terab terabyte volume. So you have to edit it. So if you edit, you get into this command line thing. And if you want to see the overview again, you do P capital G. And if you have like a large disk, like several terabytes big, or it's like up to a terabyte or something, you will see that uh, you have free space in the like uh, in the OpenBSD area, blah, 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 blah. And on, uh, the free will have like some space. Uh, if you want to resize some disk, you do R and then the letter that the disk has. And so home, for instance, you do K. And then ask for a new size. You can do, you can do it a size of like, let's make uh, home five gigs, five gigs. And you see that now it is five gigs. Hello. Go, go play somewhere else, please. So now it's five gigs. Now we have 2.6 gigs somewhere else, so that which, uh, which we could put somewhere else. Let's add it to user local. So you do R, H, and we want uh, to uh, have a relative size. So you do plus 2.6 gigs. And uh, sometimes it will complain that uh, the value that you give, even if it's the same, that it is too big. Just uh, do 2.5. Yeah, just decrease it a bit. And then, uh, okay, you, you lose a little bit of disk space, but who cares, right? So, uh, now user local is a bit bigger, now 6.8. Uh, it used to be 4.2. So uh, right now, if I write, now the data is gone. And if I do Q, it will create the partitions. It will not warn you. So be careful. Be careful to pick the right disk. So now the actual installation. Uh, I'm running from an ISO. So I can use CD0. If you're running from, uh, from a USB, you should do disk. And the uh, USB disk, uh, USB stick was in the overview of this that you saw before when you chose the install disk. 
uh, make a note of that or use HTTP if you have a fast network. It's not so big. Uh, so yeah, so I'm going to do CD0 because it's on the CD already. So the path is usually always correct. With a disk, it will ask you if the thing is mounted and it will default to no, that's fine. It will also ask you the, 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 the USB disk it, you boot it from. So uh, this path is fine. It finds all the sets. If you want to remove something like a compiler or the games, you can just select it with minus game star or minus comp star or whatever. Uh, I'm going to install everything. Uh, I checked the CD beforehand with OpenSSL, with the OpenSSL digest. So yes, and now it's the installing OpenBSD. And uh, this takes a while. It doesn't take too long though. I don't know if I'm going to fast forward this or not. Probably not, it's not, it, it's not that big. It's not the fastest either. Probably should have done from HTTP. It would probably have been faster. Next time maybe. Yeah, this is quite boring, I know. I know people don't like awkward uh, long silences, so I'll try to fill it up. And this is the base. The compilers, it's probably, uh, it uses LLVM, I believe. Version 13, as far as I know. Uh, you can get GCC as a package. And the X stuff. Okay, and it's probably, yeah. Okay, so now it's done. Uh, well, you can add more sets if you want to. There's not more. So we're fine, we're done. Uh, this is also fine. Okay, now it's uh, fetching the firmware. It like will it will fetch the firmware for your graphics card, uh, uh, processor, you, uh, microcode, uh, uh, Wi-Fi stuff. Uh, it will it will it will get everything. Uh, and now it's relinking uh, to make a new kernel. That's to uh, that's to uh, make sure everything is randomized. So you get a new kernel every time, and that makes uh, ROP very difficult. It also does it for some libraries, by the way. Um, okay. Um, we want to reboot, but this pro uh, 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 either is going to reboot in the system or is going to boot into the CD again, but we'll see. It might still have the CD as a first booting device. Then I would have to uh, remove it. Yeah, it, re it booted from the CD. Let me, uh, let me, let me, let me fix that for a bit. Hang on. Oh, yeah, fine. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's let's uh, pick the laptop screen again so you can see the result. Let's wake it up. So I can go here. And do this. Eject the disk. Okay, we're back. Okay, it's in the install thing again. You can go to the shell, you can type reboot. So now it will boot into, into OpenBSD and it will ask for passphrase because we encrypted the disk, remember? So I'm going to give it the passphrase and this will, it gives you a prompt, but it will continue like so. It just takes a few seconds. If you cannot wait, just hit enter. 
and it should boot into uh, Xenocara or X. I hate VirtualBox for this. Okay, so now it's reordering libraries, yada yada. Now it's updating the firmware, and now it's going into XenoDM. And I'm going to log in with my account. So now we have, uh, this is what it default, oh, now I'm, I'm going to be a blurry mess again. Um, why is this? Okay. <laughs> Uh, let's fix this. Okay, so now I shouldn't be a blurry mess, but also my mouse is kind of kind of weird. I should probably uh, do uh, an extra extra resize on ro ro rotate. I cannot type. Okay, uh, it's 800 by 600. Well, that is kind of not great. Default mode uh, 90, 80, 20 by. Okay. Okay, let's turn this into full screen. All right. It's still kind of, kind of, kind of janky. Why did I start a cal calculator? So yeah, uh, this is uh, OpenBSD by default. This, I'm gonna, let's, let's make it black. That's easier on the eyes. It's, now you don't need sunglasses. So we have open we have installed OpenBSD. So to make it uh, ready uh, to use, we should probably configure Duas. Remember that we set uh, a, a root password, so we become root. Oh, here's another trick that you might do. Uh, if you cannot see this, you can do the following trick. You can uh, hold down Control. Oh, uh, right mouse click. Hold down control, right mouse click, and you can do uh, enormous or uh, huge. Now you can now you can see the text. And uh, basically from here, you can install another desktop environment, or uh, if you're a masochist, you could still use this, if you really want to. Um, uh, some, uh, you can, uh, uh, what you can do is uh, uh, configure Duas, which is the OpenBSD replacement, replacement for sudo. It doesn't do all that LDAP stuff, it just elevates privileges. The users, user that you created is already, uh, is already part of the wheel group, so you can do, uh, if you become root, And then you do permit, no pass, or cache, or persist. You could also do persist. Then you have to type your password every time. I like uh, for here, I'm doing no pass because I don't want to type my password. Then you wheel. Oh. Wee! Wheel. And then do us ID. You should. Be root, and then you can do as you can g add bash or other. Oh, well, let's add a browser. Let's add Chromium. That's how you add packages, and uh, that's gonna take uh, take a bit. 
So uh, right now, OpenBSD is installed. I will continue on my uh, on my laptop, which is hardware. I will toss this uh, VM. So uh, this is how uh, this is how you can install OpenBSD. I hope this was uh, entertaining and useful. And uh, I'll see you next time with a clean OpenBSD install on my laptop uh, on actual hardware. Um, so yeah, uh, goodbye. Bye bye. Of course, I have to uh, click the right button. Bye now.